Patterson due in court today. Sheboygan Red Kettle campaign falls short. Sheboygan teen killed in rollover crash. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Good day, I'm Maddie Fister and this is Community News Review for Monday, January 14th, 2019. We expect to learn more in the coming days about 21-year-old Jake Patterson, the man suspected of killing Jim and Denise Kloss before taking their 13-year-old daughter under cover of darkness in mid-October. Patterson will make his initial court appearance on Monday in Barron County, where he will be charged with two counts of first-degree homicide and one count of kidnapping. Following that appearance, the formal criminal complaint against him will be released. Very little is known about Patterson, and sheriff's officials say he has no criminal record, and it is believed that he was unemployed. Officials with Genio Turkey, where Jim and Denise worked, said he worked at the Barron facility for all of one day before quitting and saying he was moving out of the area. It is not believed that Patterson had any contact with the classes during that time, and so far there is no known evidence that, the, that connects him to the family. Despite that, it is still believed that he was targeting Jamie. Barron County Sheriff Chris Fitzgerald says until he received the call that she was found in Douglas County, the thought of looking for her there was, was not on our radar. Investigators continue to call Kloss the hero of the case after she managed to escape the home where it is believed she was being hidden for most of the 88-day ordeal. Her description of Patterson and his vehicle led to his arrest in a matter of minutes. Sheriff's officials believe Patterson may have been driving around the neighborhood looking for her after she escaped before he was pulled over. A 17-year-old from Sheboygan was killed early Thursday morning after a high-speed chase in Manitowoc County. The Sheriff's Department says the officer tried pulling the driver of a minivan over around 1.15 a.m. and the driver sped away on County Highway LS. The driver lost control while taking a curve and the vehicle went into a ditch and rolled over and hit a tree. A 17-year-old male passenger from Sheboygan was thrown from the back seat of the vehicle and was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver, a 15-year-old female from Sheboygan and 14-year-old female passenger from Sheboygan were both trapped and Jaws for Life were used to get them out of the vehicle. Deputies say that the van was being driven without the owner's consent and they were going more than 80 miles per hour before the crash. Names are not being released at this time. The final numbers are in for the Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign, and a press release says they are nearly $92,000 short from their fundraising goal. During the campaign, people in Sheboygan County donated about $519,000, either at the Red Kettles or by sending in their donations. Their goal this year was $611,000 and money that is needed to pr be provided to a number of services to people who are in a tough spot in our community. You can still help out by donating in person at the Salvation Army offices on Pennsylvania Avenue or online at sasheboygan.org. There were very few complaints about a porn star who was invited to the UW Lacrosse campus as part of a free speech event last year. Most of the people who wrote to UW Lacrosse leaders about the event did not seem to mind. The Wisconsin State Journal requested emails to and from UW Lacrosse leaders about Nina Hartley's November visit and she was paid $5,000 from Chancellor Joe Gao's discretionary account. The State Journal says about 75% of those emails supported the idea of a frank discussion about sex and pornography. 
there were others, including alumni, who vowed to no longer make donations to the school. Chancellor Gao faced repercussions because of the incident, and his spending was audited, and he was reprimanded by UW system. President Jay Cross, who said in a written report that he exercised very poor judgment, Gao was denied a scheduled pay raise last year. A Confederate monument was removed Friday from Forest Hills Cemetery in Madison. City officials had debated it for more than a year. Park Superintendent Eric Knapp told the Wisconsin State Journal that the monument was taken out and donated to the Wisconsin Veterans Museum. They placed it in an ar archive storage facility and have two plans to display it. The museum accepted the monument as part of a Wisconsin's war history, and because of some veterans, groups helped pay for it. The monument marked an area of the cemetery where 140 Confederate soldiers were buried. The, most of them died as prisoners of war at the Camp Randall. More than a year ago, Madison Mayor Paul Soglin ordered the monument to be removed. It was later determined that it could not be done by mayoral decree, leading to a series of meetings and rulings by various county parts and historical commissions. They blew the roof off at BMO Harris Bradley Center on Sunday, and no, that is not reference a Metallica concert or a crowd cheering, a game-winning, half-court shot at the end of a tight basketball game. Demolition experts conducted a controlled explosion to bring the roof of the former Bucks Arena down as part of the destruction process. The Bradley Center roof structure removal went as plans. Bucks and Pfizer Forum spokesman Barry Baum said in a written statement, according to WAOW-TV, we are one major step closer to complete demolition. The implosion brought the debris down to the main seating area of the arena to allow for easy cleanup. The facility served as the home of the Bucks and Milwaukee Admirals minor league hockey team, along with Marquette University's men's basketball team from 1988 to 2018. The arena also was the home of the Milwaukee Mustangs of the Arena Football League for two different spells and briefly hosted an indoor soccer team. Due to the proximity of buildings nearby, including the brand new Pfizer Forum, the Bradley Center will be destructed in stages as opposed to being blown up, and the Bucks plan to redevelop the site once the demolition is complete. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Wednesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.